In this video, I want to show you how to replace the front brake caliper on this Ford F-150. Now, other than the tools and the caliper, what you'll need is brake fluid. Make sure you have some on hand so you can top off that master cylinder at the end. Let's get started. To begin, let's remove the wheel. Use a 21 millimeter socket. Unfortunately though, I'll have to use a 22 because my lug nuts have swollen up inside of these chrome caps and that makes them so that they're not really a 21 millimeter anymore. Regardless, let's take off all six and pull the wheel off. With these off, take the wheel off. Now with the wheel off, let's follow this up and you'll see that it bolts on to the knuckle right up here on a bracket with a 10 millimeter bolt. Let's remove this bolt so we can free this bracket up and get more slack on the hose. Once again, 10 millimeter socket. Take this off, remove the bracket, and there you have it. Optionally, but recommended, you can also take the ABS wire off of this. And there we go, set that aside. Moving on to the banjo bolt, take a 14 millimeter wrench or socket, break this free. There we go. Just enough to get a little bit of fluid to come out and then snug it to stop the flow of fluid. And you wanna do this so that it can be easier to remove this once the caliper is unbolted and off of the knuckle. So at this point, it looks like I have to snug it just a little more. There we go, but at least it's broken free and you know that it'll come off easier. Now let's remove these two 13 millimeter bolts that hold the caliper onto the bracket. Take the lower one out, leave it in a few turns so it can hold the caliper on the bracket while you take the top one off. Take this one out. Now you can remove the lower one and pull the caliper off of the pads. If this doesn't really work for you, you can stick a pry bar in here and uh, try to compress the caliper pistons just a little bit. There we go. That should give you just enough slack. Pull this off. What's happening is these pistons are pressing tight up against these pads and as you can see they have some notches so they'll get caught on these and the pads can't slide straight out. They have to slide sideways so that's where the issue arises. Also, remove these retainer clips here, the, uh, the spring clips that spread the pads apart. There should be two of them. My other one was stuck on the caliper. Now take your caliper, put it up on top of the knuckle here where the rotor is. I like to put it up there so it doesn't put pressure on the brake hose. And once I do that, I can take the pads out. Sometimes these anti-rattle clips have a little retainer at the top there, preventing the pad from falling out. There we go. That fell off, that's fine. Now use an 18 millimeter socket and unbolt these two bolts that hold the caliper bracket onto the knuckle. Leave this one in a few turns so it can hold the caliper bracket while you take off this top one. Now you can pull both of these out, remove the caliper bracket, set it aside. Take your new caliper, and I know the bracket and the caliper are together right now, but we will separate them as soon as this is bolted on. Line it up, slide the bolts through, and uh, we'll bottom them out, make this nice and snug. Then we'll take the caliper off of the bracket, torque these, and then continue with our installation. Tighten these up. Now switch back to your 13 millimeter socket. Let's get the caliper off of the bracket. Now we have much better access to torque these and we can prep the caliper bracket to accept the new pads and the new caliper. 136 foot-pounds is the torque for both of these. Now remove the slider pins one at a time and I'll show you why so that we can lubricate them Sometimes they do have enough lubrication, but usually I like to add more and I'm gonna use silicone paste. Add a good amount of silicone paste to the pin itself, but don't add too much because it will just get wiped off as you put it back into the caliper. So keep that in mind. What I do like to do though, is add extra to the inside of the boot here. This acts as a reserve of grease in the uh, folds of the boot. That's where it'll store it. Once the slider pin requires more grease as the old grease wears out, it'll pull from here. So at this point, you can put this back in. Doing that will also ensure that there's grease right along this top ridge here. 
press this in all the way. Now squeeze it and press out. This will do two things. One, it'll get out air, and two, it'll get out any excess grease. Give this a few twists. And as you saw, this pin had an orange rubber boot. It's not always orange, but there will be a rubber boot. Now, as we move to the bottom one, once you take it out, you'll notice it's just a solid piece of steel, no boot. You definitely don't want to confuse the two and put the rubber boot in the bottom hole and the straight solid pin in the top hole because that boot has a purpose and you want it to go back right where it came from. Just like for the top, I'm going to add some silicone paste to the inside of the boot here. Now keep in mind, I'm using high temperature brake rated silicone paste. You wanna make sure that whatever you're using, whether it's brake grease or silicone paste, can withstand high temperatures so that it doesn't melt and wash away as your brakes heat up because they do get pretty hot. Slide this pin back in all the way, give it a couple twists and squeeze any excess air or grease out. There we go. Now what you wanna do is put a little bit of silicone paste on these ears here, as well as on this surface. Try not to get it on the rotor. If you do, wipe it off and degrease it with brake parts cleaner. This is where the anti-rattle clips will ride and you wanna prevent rust from building up. The best way to do this is to grease that surface. Once you do that, put the anti-rattle clips on and make sure you don't put too much grease on there because if you do, at this point, It'll squeeze out onto the rotor. I'm looking at it and none has come out and touched the rotor, so that's perfect. Let's do the same to the bottom. This is quite a bit here, so I'm gonna wipe it off. Now you can do this before you install it, but on a new caliper, since you don't have to clean anything, I find it easier if you're just careful and uh, just do it after it's mounted. Makes things a little easier. Take the anti-rattle clip that goes on the bottom, slide it on, make sure you press it down all the way, lock it in. You don't want this to move around. Now you can take the pads, put the pads in, slide them in at an angle. That's usually the best way to get these to start in here. You have to overcome the, uh, the little clip that is on these anti-rattle clips, which is handy for putting on the pad spreader springs, but it actually kind of gets in your way when it comes to, there we go, putting on the pads. Now, even though I had to tap it, that is not because they don't fit or they're too snug in here. As you can see, these slide around perfectly and that's what you want. You want them to be nice and smooth in here. And there we go. Both inner and outer pads are in. Put the pad spreader springs on. There we go. As you do this, these will hold the pads from coming off of the bracket. But it's important to put these because these springs prevent the pads from sticking to the rotor when you're done applying the brakes, they push them out. What I'm gonna do now is put the caliper on the top slider pin, just like this. Bolt it up with one bolt so it can stay in place and pivot on that. Now, what this allows me to do is squeeze these pads in while, while putting the caliper down. There we go. Now you can put the lower bolt in and tighten it up. The torque for these two is 55 foot-pounds. Now let's take this plug out. You can use your 14 millimeter wrench that you used earlier, or you can just use some pliers. Pull it out of here. Over a collection bucket, remove the banjo bolt off of the old caliper. Make sure neither of the copper washers stick to the hose. It's okay if they stick to the caliper or the banjo bolt because we have a new one of both of those. But inspect the hose. Obviously, this one is almost brand new, so it's in perfect condition. Discard these, do not reuse them. Take the new banjo bolt and you wanna put one copper washer over. Then take the hose and stick the banjo bolt through the hose and then put a copper washer on the back side of it and then start it onto the caliper. This part might be a little tricky because your gloves are probably gonna be slippery from the brake fluid, but as soon as it threads on smoothly, you wanna bottom it out so you can lose as little fluid as possible doing this job. All right, snug this up. This will prevent the fluid from leaking and then we will torque this to 30 foot-pounds. Now pop off the cap for the bleeder screw and let's gravity bleed the caliper. Take an 11 millimeter wrench or socket, break this free, and we'll wait for gravity to pull the fluid down and into the caliper, fill it up, and push it out the bleeder screw. Looks like we have a steady drip of fluid here, so let's cap it off. 
and then we'll perform a full manual brake bleed to ensure that there is no air in the system. To begin your manual brake bleed, make sure that your brake master cylinder is topped off with clean fluid. Then you're going to want to have a second person in the car pumping up the brake pedal as you open and close the bleeder screw. So after a few pumps, have them hold pressure on the brake pedal and open up the bleeder screw. At this point, air and fluid will come out. Once the pedal has reached the floor, close off the bleeder screw and have them pump up the brakes again. After two to three pumps, have them hold pressure on the brake pedal once again and open up the bleeder screw. Repeat this procedure until no more air comes out of the caliper and you have only clean fluid. Once you get to that point, close off the bleeder screw and top off the master cylinder with clean fluid to make sure it's full. Don't forget to clean off the residual brake fluid. Put the cap back on on this. One more thing we have to do is to resecure this bracket onto the knuckle for the brake hose. Snug it up. And don't forget to reattach the ABS wire to this bracket here if you took it off. And there you have it, let's put the wheel back on. Now let's get the wheel back on. Start on all six of your lug nuts, bottom them out, and torque them in a cross pattern. It's important to do that so the wheel can seat properly to 150 foot-pounds. Here we go, 150 in a cross pattern. There you go, you can double check it if you want. If not, take it for a road test. So there you have it, repair is done. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, don't forget to leave a like. If you have anything to say, leave it in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell so you can stay up to date with all of our future content. Thanks for watching.